Hello, welcome back to my space, Eunice Adubango, welcoming you once again. I hope you enjoyed the teaching of last week. If you didn't, please go back to the teaching of last week to learn about those that come and stop the wells that we dig. Uh, if you are a business person, if your friend is a business person, if your loved one is a business person, please make sure that they listen to that teaching. But also, I want to encourage you to please like this video because in liking is how you expose it for other people to be able to watch it. I also encourage you to please leave me a comment because I put in quite something to make these videos. I would like to know what you are thinking and I would like to know where this is headed. And finally, if you have not subscribed to this YouTube channel, please subscribe to this YouTube channel so that your friends and your loved ones can be able to see us so that we take this message of the gospel to the uttermost ends of the earth. Today we are into child care and I am being hosted yet again at Toddler's Gold, your child's addiction. Toddler's Gold uh, is a place where they measure in giving your children experiential learning experiences. I want you to get in touch with Rosemary to get to know about Toddler's Gold because the Toddler's Gold social media handles and their telephone number and their location are running on the screen please get in touch with them and if you want to stimulate your child's brain if you want your child not to just play games but be able to get much out of the games that they are playing if you want your child to have experiential learning if you have a kindergarten and you're looking for experiential learning toys please get in touch with toddlers gold so today i am talking about child care the year is coming to an end i want to ask you parent both christian non-christian mother father sister brother auntie have you ever done a child care audit concerning your child so today i want to talk about child care audits and I want to straight away go into the word. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 27 verses 23 to 27 that be diligent to know the state of your flocks and attend to your herds. For riches are not forever, nor does a crown endure to all generations. When the hay is removed and the grass shows itself and the herbs of the mountains are gathered in, the lambs are the ones that will provide your clothing and the goats the price of a field. You shall have enough goat's milk for your food, for the food for your household and the nourishment of your maid servants. How do these verses connect to child care audits? When you are doing the right thing with your children, especially as they grow up, your children are the ones that are going to manage that multi-billion dollar business that you have uh, established. Your children are the arrows in your youth who are going to carry your name beyond you. Your children are the ones that are going to manage your property when you finally die. But your children are also the ones that are going to bring other children into your home. So it's very important that you're raising your son right because your son must have a good eye to bring the right daughter-in-law. It is important that you're raising a good daughter-in-law because your daughter-in-law is the one going to carry your name into another family you do not want the family that receives your child to say my god what is this that we brought to our family you do not want your child to go to a very good family that has been set up well and she's the one that has taken her bad manners to that family but you you also do not want to toil all your life and then when you hand over what you're toiling for to your children they are not able to carry it to their next generation that is the reason why every time as the year is coming to to an end. You need to carry out a child care audit so that the results of that audit will help you to be able to make decisions for the things that you're going to do with your children next year. So of course as I'm teaching this, I'm teaching it from the thought or the understanding that you as a parent last year or you as parents last year came up with a way that you uh you were to 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 care for your children maybe uh you sat as father and mother and you said next year when we are doing child care we are going to measure on these things and therefore it is time to take stock All, of course you keep on doing audits you do quarterly audits every four months you need to sit with your spouse and say okay how well are we doing in this area in my own family there are three areas where we decided we were going to measure this year as we take care of our children as we help them to grow in intellect and we help them to grow emotionally as we help their hands to grow so that they learn to work we had three major areas and every 
quarter we would meet with my husband and we would sit down and say you know we want to carry out an audit but as the year comes to an end we want to know what the actual results are of what we have done how much has your child grown what have you been able to accomplish with that child and what are you going therefore to do next year an audit in english is defined as the examination or inspection of, of various things followed by physical checking to make sure that everything is done according to the documented system of transactions therefore you want to um uh, you want to be able to see what was documented and what has been done a personal audit on the other hand is used to check it is used to review and it, it is used to evaluate, okay, to evaluate someone's growth over a certain period of time. Now, I know most of us as Christian parents, we don't do this because we are busy in this fellowship, in the other fellowship, we are running around. Now, time to take stock has come. Do you know that when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, among the many things he's going to judge you about, when he says, well done, good and faithful servant, the way you raised your child is going to be part of it. Because I keep telling parents that every child is a result of a prayer that has been made in a certain place. At many years ago when Uganda was going through distress, someone prayed and asked God for a president. Someone prayed and asked God for a change of power. Someone prayed and said we want someone who is going to bring peace into this nation. And I believe that during that season so many boy children were born and out of those many boy children was the current president of Uganda. Now the, the Kagutas went ahead and they raised the exact person that was prayed for. There is probably another mother or father instead of raising a president they raised a gatekeeper. Instead of raising a gatekeeper, they raised a president. Instead of raising an accountant, they raised a lawyer. And so the prayers of the people go in vain. That is the reason why you do not want your nation, you do not want your family, you do not want your personal life to miss the season of visitation. Therefore, you must raise right. That's why I'm saying that at Toddler's Gold, there is experiential learning toys. You want to stimulate your child the right way. So every year you need to be able to sit and say, what are our uh, goals? For us, usually as a family, we usually ask for uh, how, what are the goals in their area of spiritual growth? How are we going to help these children to grow spiritually this year? And what are we going to measure on? Because you can't measure on everything. Sometimes you say, okay, right now I have a teenager in my house, a 15 year old. And we realize that one of the areas where he needed to grow was in the area of self-esteem, was in the area of self-worth, was in the area of understanding who he is. And therefore everything spiritual that helps him to understand who he is, everything spiritual that helps him to understand his emotions was an area of focus because if you do not do that remember the church is planning for everyone the church is not planning for just your child so by some good luck the plan might catch on and it helps your child but by bad luck it may not so you as a parent you need to take stock of the condition of your flock you need to be sure that at the end of this year this child has grown spiritually this child has grown in intellect because you need to also make sure and say this year for example for our 15 year old there was a year when we said we are going to focus on making sure he understands what career is and what career to go for and if there are subjects what should he major on if he fails what does he do and that was a major thing through the year so yes the pastor at church will speak but for us at our family table on top of what the pastor has spoken we are speaking certain things when I drive to school I speak when my husband drives to school he speaks when we find a mentor we talk to them to talk to this child there was a time when we were helping them to know their body and that entire year we focused on how does your body work on top of other things because we don't measure on one thing like i said we talk about the spiritual component we talk about the intellectual component that you know so the intellect is how you're going to deposit in their brain the spiritual is how you're going to deposit in their soul and in their spirit for eternal life and then how are we going to deposit in their emotions because there are so many adults who are adults and emotionally they are in tatters they cannot withstand any temptation any tribulation any hard time because nobody intentionally took them through these things so these things take them unawares so as we come to the end of the year how have you blessed your child this year? How can you 
explain to someone the growth of your child when your child sits there can you tell someone that you know this year my child learned to save this year my child learned about money this year my child learned how to read the bible this year my child ha learned how to pray the bible because i don't know many sunday school teachers who are going to take my child step by step through how to pray they are just going to pray and my children are going to pick up that prayer and sometimes they regurgitate and sometimes they pray that's why you find that sometimes in our fellowship we all pray the same way and sometimes we are praying wrong because no adult intentionally taught the children i want us to go and read certain scriptures as we delve into this so that then we know what god is expecting of us i want us to go to deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 7 uh deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 7 the bible says and i'm going to start from verse 6 and these words which i command you today shall be in your heart so it means that before you actually get it onto the children it must be in your heart and verse 7 specifically says you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house when you walk by the way when you lie down and when you rise up the first word there is diligent. What have you been diligent on as far as your child is concerned this year? Many of us as adults forget that these children are our flock. So we live selfish lives where we are only powering into ourselves. So almost all the evenings of this year, instead of sitting at table with your child, you were in one church meeting after another. I want you to sit down and ask yourself how that church meeting then has contributed to the growth of your child. Because if we do not do this, we are raising emotional time bombs. I see children in pictures of fellowships. The fellowship is going on. The mother is smiling and lifting up holy hands and the child is in the chair sleeping. They are in their uniform. It is in the night, 8.30 p.m. and the child is tired. And I'm asking myself, apart from what that child learned at school today, what has that mother deposited in that child? Remember that you went to fellowship and the prophet prophesied about you and for you, you were excited and you started shouting hallelujah. Does, mean, does not mean that now your child has learned how to be patient. Remember, because the man of God called you and you went to church and you spent the entire evening in worship does not necessarily mean that now your child has learned how to study their math. You must, on top of, the, of all those things, if you must do all those things, you must, on top of them, intentionally plan how your child is going to grow in intellect. Because the Bible is saying that you must speak to your children when you sit in your house. I keep asking people that if you're always outside your house, what are you, wh what do you take back to your house and how are you helping your children in your house? Because for example, in Titus, when the Bible is telling us about what the older women should do for the younger women, it says, teach them how to be temperate in their own home. We are teaching undomesticated children because they are church children. We are teaching them how to worship, how to lift holy hands, how to dance on the pulpit and how to do all these things. And we are not teaching them how to lay the bed. We are not teaching them how to flush the toilet. We are not teaching them how to wash their underwear. And therefore, they are the type of husbands that are going to get married to women. And then they are going to have their underwear with skid marks. Because there is a time in a child's life when they are still young, where you have to intentionally teach them how to clean their bam bam after they have done a long call. The church sermon is not going to do that. So if you have a toddler, for example, this year, what are some of the self-care routines that you have taught your toddler? This morning before I came to do this teaching, my soon-to-be seven-year-old came to me and was asking me, Mommy, because his older brother had told him, he said, Mommy, is it true that from Monday now I have to scrub myself all over and I'm the one going to shower myself? I said, yes, it's even late. Because we have concentrated this year on teaching Kel how to totally clean up his body by himself and now it's time for him to practice because before long he's going to have pubic hair he's going to do all these things and if he has not learned how to clean himself up we are raising a husband that is going to be a problem for that young woman therefore i want to ask you what are you doing in your home because the bible says that you should teach them when you sit in your home if all the programs that you are involved in all year round if none of them allows you to sit in your home, you need to take stock. 
The Bible is also saying when you walk by the way, what do we do when we walk by the way? We expose our children to the things around us. We help them to read the billboards and say this is what it means. We help them to see how people are living and saying, you see, you don't drive like that. You don't do it like this. When you're driving in this city, you drive carefully. You, but for you this year, along the road, along the way, what have you taught your child? The other thing the Bible talks about is when you lie down, meaning before you go to bed. Some of us as parents, as we are listening to this conversation, there is no single time this year that we have been around as our children. We are going to bed. We were away when they got in and we were out when they went in. We literally come back into our homes like submarines, you know, like our children don't even recognize us. We just duck in and we duck out. We arrive in the dark and we live in the dark. But the Bible is saying that while you lie down, there has to be a time in your house and there has to be pre-planned things in your house that you teach those children just before they go to bed and when you rise up in the morning when your children rise up do they find you and your husband or at least one of the parents around is there someone that is teaching them when they arise and saying before you get out of bed before your feet hit the floor please pick your bible you say it today you say it tomorrow you say it the next day because that is what you're concentrating on this year i want you to ask yourself this year what have you concentrated on and if you have not been doing this it is now time for you to do strategic planning for child care write down two things in the spiritual growth area that you are going to concentrate on next year as you raise your children write down two things in the intellectual growth area and say whatever happens i am going to focus on these things write down two things in the emotional area and say i am going to concentrate on these things and then write down a plan write down the resources you are going to need because even in the growth of their intellect in their intellect and emotional in there comes growth in their gifts and abilities i remember there is a year when we said okay we are going to concentrate on making sure that these children discover what their gifts and abilities are and when we found out what their gifts and abilities were it was a tough thing for me because it meant getting out of my comfort zone to drive them to different places to be able to do these things but because that that is what we concentrated on. I said by the end of this year, they must have grown to this level. Maybe they should even be in a position where they take themselves. I concentrated on that. And now, for my older child, there are some things, trainings that he can go for without me because there is a time when we taught them. But if you don't do that, you're going to find yourself in a situation where your child is at campus, a campus, and you must be the one to drive them around town to go for a football game. Because you did not do it when they were seven years old, and you did not know the whole time that, you know, time is passing and the child is growing. I keep telling people that most of us fellowship best people, the reason why we are in fellowship is because wow, wow, I didn't know that. What a revelation. How deep, whatever. But we are going to wake up one day when our children are worse than us because we are not in position to even pass these things on. I mean, there are people who have something to do at church on Sunday the whole day. They are at church the entire day. Like, And when I mean entire day, I mean from 6 a.m. They jet in at church and they leave at 6 p.m. Some Someone told me a story of a, a person at church uh, that used to come and their children would follow later with the maid but you know that thing that happens on your feet on your legs eh, where you did not shower and the legs are, are pale you know the children would show up and they did not even shower but this one was the church minister and they have gone ahead and you know they are resourcing the people and their children don't know how to shower and this person was pained and said dr Ines, what do you do i said well unfortunately i don't know the person you're the one that is in touch with church church uh, is in touch with the person you're the one who can talk to the person but we are in we are raised emotional time bombs we are raising children who are who don't know how to shave and they are going to get married and they are going to be smelling for their spouses we are raising children who do not know how to visit with relatives you know there was a time when they kept us in compounds they kept us behind long high wall fences and we did not meet our relatives and you know that became a problem in our generation where we did not relate with our cousins these days they are keeping us in the, we are keeping the children in the church the children don't even know what family is the children i mean i have heard about people where even when they lose a loved one the children cannot go the children have never gone to see an uncle they've never buried they've never known these things how are those children going to cope when they now they lose their own loved one when they lose their own child when they have never been in a situation where they see people losing children how are they going to cope in the future 
because you're concentrating on going around, moving in every fellowship, moving in every place. Parents, I want you to sober up today. And I want you to ask yourself, in all honesty, what have I taught my children this year? Apart from that one, one sentence that is going to appear on their report saying promoted to this class. Apart from promoted to this class, is there any kind of promotion that you can give to your children? I want us to read Proverbs chapter 4. A very interesting proverb. Proverb chapter 4. I like to read that proverb. I like to remind myself about that proverb often because it always puts things in perspective for me. Proverbs chapter 4 uh, verse 3. It says, When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me. He also taught me. Father, what have you taught your child? I know for you, you're looking to be taught. You are the first one in fellowship. You're the last one to leave. You're the first one in Rotary. You're the first, last one to leave. You're the first one in the business networking group. For you, we can account for your growth. But can we account for the growth of your child? What have you taught your child? Solomon, the Bible says, his father taught him and he says, he said to me. And then he highlights what the father said to him. Let me ask you, 10 years from today, for you, there are things, by the way, you can say that my father told me or my mother told me. Ten years from today, apart from your child quoting what the pastor said, can your child say that my mother told me? This is what Solomon's father told him. David and David was more busy than you. And for me, that is what sobers me every time I read this verse. No one busier than David. I told you about the coat of many colors and I mentioned the many things David was when I was teaching you about Joseph. But the Bible says, he to, he, the father told me, let your heart retain my words, keep my commands and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, do not forget, turn, don't turn away from the words of my mouth. Many of us actually wonder how Solomon knew when God asked him what to ask for. How Solomon knew that the best thing to ask for was wisdom. Solomon knew because the father had told him. The father told him, get wisdom. Actually, there is a version of scripture that says that my father told me, in all thy getting, get wisdom. There is even a version that says, my father told me, even if it means to sell everything you have, sell it and buy wisdom. So when God presented himself in front of Solomon and said, ask for anything, Solomon knew what to ask for. There is a version in the Bible that I like in that, in, of that scripture. It actually says, my father drilled it into me. I love that verse. Drilling. You cannot drill while you're on the move all the time. You cannot dream while you're jumping up and, church, up and down in church. You know, you can't drill. And I am a church goer and I go to church a lot. But I am saying that there is a place to go for fellowship and there is a place to sit down and mentor your children. What have you drilled in your children such that when the world asks them to ask for anything, they will know the right thing to ask for. That is what that scripture tells us. Solomon had these things over and over until they became a part of him and he knew what to ask for. The by, one of the things that I've been teaching my children this year and that I teach adults this year and that God taught me at the beginning of this year is that when you are born, your brain comes to the earth blank. Your brain is blank. Your brain does not know right from wrong. Your brain, whatever, everything you're doing right now is exactly what your brain has experienced. Whatever you have not experienced, you're not doing it. That's why you cannot eat using chopsticks because you did not experience them. And there are even people who are listening and they've never heard what a chopstick is. Do you know that there is a person down dozens in Kasese who is that side and does not even know what Wi-Fi is? And they are going to die like that. Their brain will never know that there was such a thing as Wi-Fi. So everything you have experienced opens your brain up to certain truths, opens your brain up to certain facts. So if you want your child to be emotionally intelligent, you must expose them to as many emotional intelligent things so that their brain opens up. So sometime this year, I sat down and I said, but will my children actually understand cults? If they actually encounter a cult 
And then I realized that my children's brains and hearts and minds and spirits were dead as far as this thing called cults is concerned. And then I said, I need to shed you to teach these children about cults. And I remember there is one cult, uh, very big, very well known in, this, in the world. You know, one of the, those richest churches, those who know the cult now know. My children had never heard about it. And so I told them about it. We were even incidentally driving by one of their, eh, if you go, you know, you know, like where their, their things are. And I was shocked after I told my children, you know, these people, they believe like this, but the Bible doesn't say this. It is, it is now I'm teaching them along the way. And then I pass and I say that, you know, they are very rich. They can actually uh, get you through riches. I even said, and this is how they preach and they don't get tired. And even if you abuse them, they come back and they walk like this. They are usually in twos. They are usually smart. When I told my children, when I finished, my older child said, are they bad? <laughs> like, as like, the whole time I'm trying to labor to tell you that this is a cult. That is when it dawned on me that if these people had reached my child before I reached my child, my child could have showed up at my doorstep one day and he could have told me, me I'm born again, but I pray from the other church X. And the church, I have not seen at church a day when the pastor has stood up and has talked to the people about that particular cult. The pastor is going to say the general sermon, but there is a thing that the parent must do. So as I end this teaching, I want to ask you, number one, do you ever set targets for your children's growth in their intellect, in their emotion, and in their uh, spiritual growth? Do you ever? If you don't, it is the right time to do it, and if possible, do it with your spouse. When you plan, Attach resources. Resources include money. Resources include people. Resources include places. I know people who, when they go to conferences, they make their children wear suits and they go with their children to the conferences because they are passing on something. Number two, you then need to make time to teach your children those things. It's going to mean that you as an adult, you are going to cut certain things out of your life. If you realize the extent of damage that you, you have, you would help your own child. You would help your own child not to turn up worse than you. So you're going to make time to do those things. Number three, you're going to intentionally monitor and evaluate. So in your plan, you're going to say, April next year, I will sit down with a friend and we'll evaluate and see how far have we come. June next year, we will sit down. Then in October again, we will sit down. And after taking stock, then we will plan for 2025. And now finally, if you had a plan for your child and you have been executing it this year, how well have you done? It might be a time to celebrate. Right, be a time because for us now, our children, the one who is 11 and the one who is 15, we also give them targets. Like we gave them targets this year and said, each of you must save this amount of money. Therefore, it was upon them to find work and be able to do so that they save. So we are going to ask them, where are your savings? Because for us as parents, we are doing a good job saving for our children. But saving for your children does not mean your child will learn how to save. At what point do you teach them how to save? At what point do you teach them how to go to the bank and do banking? I meet people every day who don't know how to sign on a check and they are adults and, you know, they are in their 40s and I'm thinking, who grew this one? Nani ya kuzono? Who does not know how to sign a check and you're calling yourself a CEO? Now, it is something that is funny, but you might be raising that kind of person yourself. Okay? Okay, do you, do you know how to sign the check? Let's start there. So... The Bible has told us to be careful with the condition of our flocks. Our children are our flocks. Are your flocks in the right condition? Those children are the ones going to take care of you in your old age. Those children are the ones going to carry your name to the next level. You know there are fathers who died and when they died, the name died. There was no child to carry the name. They were just the man that once was there. They raised nobody to carry the name. We are raising our children to carry our name to the next generation. That's why the Bible calls them arrows in our youth, because we shoot them on target. My dear mother, my dear father, take stock. If it's time to celebrate and you have hit it, celebrate. Take your children out and let them also learn that when we achieve, we celebrate. If they have not achieved everything, 
talk to them about how to take it on to the next year and how to make sure they achieve because it's time to ask yourself why didn't we achieve this until next time i want to hear about those audits that you're doing if you're auditing your children if you are auditing your child care and i want to know what the results of those audits are by the way when i say i want to know i really want to know Please write to me. Please put a comment in the chat. Please ask me questions and I will be willing to answer them. Until next time, Yunis Adubango in my space and I am happy to have you again. Bye-bye.